Welcome adventurers to the Unreal World. Released in 1992 and still updated to this day, the Unreal World is one of the oldest games still under active development. Its legacy status means that while the graphics may be primitive, the depth of a survival-based gameplay and wildlife interactions are well-developed, realistic, and of course, extremely challenging. The setting of this vast open world is Iron Age Finland, deep in the unspoiled wilderness. However, there are signs of civilization in this world, and many friends to be made. But there are enemies too, and one of the greatest to inhabit the unreal world are the Nerpes. Despite their strange name, the tactics they use are all too familiar to those who have faced evil before. In every age, there is born a person who will rise up and conquer the evil of the land. This is the story of one such hero. Canute the Kamalanian has been chosen by the ancestors to rid the world of the purple menace. This is a task of monumental proportions and will take many years and much bloodshed to accomplish. But with the help of the local tribesmen and our loyal canine companions, Canute the Kamalanian will become Canute the Destroyer. And Canute awakens in the middle of the wilderness, completely surrounded by darkness and the unknown territories of the north. But he will survive and eventually overcome his ultimate enemy, the Nurpezit. But the first few steps are always the most challenging, and the ultimate victory is still a long way away. So let's begin our journey immediately. First, I should note that this is an unmodded playthrough, unlike some of my previous series, which if you are interested in a more survival focused or escape scenario, then check out some of my other Unreal World series linked down below. But like I said, let's get off to a good start here in this world. The first step in the Unreal World, no matter what scenario you've chosen, is to first check your inventory. So let's hit the I button to open up our inventory screen. And starting at the top, we've got a fine camo knife. That's going to be extremely helpful for us. It's a rather heavy knife. And the Kamo man esteems his knife, and it is usually of great personal value to him, definitely, as is this one to us. And we got the fine modifier on this knife, so that's very helpful. Uh, secondly, we've got a staff, not so helpful for this. We'll probably end up just dropping that somewhere so we're not stuck with four extra pounds of weight. It's not really a tradable item either, in my experience. Most traders don't aren't interested in just a plain piece of wood, but we very very luckily got ourselves a short bow and eight arrows to start with. You don't always start with a ranged weapon even if you devote points into your archery skill. So this is very fortunate. Now the short bow is probably one of the weaker bows, but we're going to make good use of it, no doubt about it. And if we take a look at our clothing, nothing too exceptional here. We've got a few fur pieces. The overcoat is nice. If we get really desperate, we can make some cordage from that, but probably won't come to that. And we've definitely got a lot of stuff we need to upgrade here in terms of our clothing to prepare for the winter. And obviously we're going to want to get some real armor once we start our raiding. So the food is next. Uh, pretty standard here. A little bit of bread and some roasted cuts. Obviously it won't last more than a week. So we're going to need to start hunting and stuff. But the second step, if we leave that screen, is to exit the overworld map here and unfurl our action actual map by hitting F6 we can take a look at the world there's a lot of uncovered territory here shrouded in blackness but we do get a general sense of the different cultures in the world and where our position is here relative to them we are the red dot just in the north of the Rimi culture so let's do a little bit of exploring in this area try and find a settlement and some open ground that we can start our hunting A 
Oh, well, looks like we have encountered an elk right away. We should probably go ahead and wield our short bow and our arrows just in case we encounter more animals. This is in the deep forest here. We can take a look. Maybe we'll get lucky and have a clean shot, but no, unfortunately, this elk is uh, separated by several different trees from us. So this one is not worth, I think, wasting an arrow on. What we will do, though, while we are here on the local terrain map, is cut down a few of these small saplings. It's good to grab a few of these early so that once we do get some animals killed and hunted and butchered and hided, we can, of course, use the cordage from these little saplings to smoke and or dry the animals. So I'll spend just a little bit of time cutting down about a dozen of these, and then we're going to continue our search for some flat land and some friendly settlements. All right, well, as you can see, I have crafted up several different withies, which are primitive cordage made out of basically twisted up saplings. They won't serve us for any kind of clothing or detailed or fine crafting, but they will work for processing food. So that's what we've got now. We're going to carry those with us until, like I say, we can find some civilization and set up a little smoking operation. Ah, as you can see, we've located a hill and some mountainous area, so that allows us a better view. And, as you can see, there happens to be another elk here on the map, but, again, he's pretty well surrounded by heavy forest, so I'm going to make my way south, knowing that if we check our map one more time, yeah, there should be some settlements roughly in the central region of these cultural indicators so that's where i'm going to make my move towards ah and we have found our first two settlements here as we explore the wilderness a settlement comes into view up ahead here they are now unfortunately these are surrounded by a lot of dense forests as well so i'm looking for an area we can set up that has nice clear fields where there won't be a lot of trees in our way as we're hunting. But it is important still to enter these settlements and speak to the people there. We might pick up a quest when we encounter some of these villagers. Also, we can ask them about any animals that they might have for sale. And although we can't afford any right now, certainly with the meager goods we have, in the future, after we've gotten a few hunts under our belt, we can probably trade for them. Now, this young lady tells me that there are no animals here, so that means we'll just go ahead and turn around, quietly and peacefully leave the village, and we'll move on to the next settlement. Okay, and we have entered the next settlement. We shake the needles from our shoulders and come forward among the people. Here we are. Another young lady stands to greet us at the edge of the village, so we will speak to her and greet her, introduce ourselves. Then we will move on to asking about any animals. Ah, yes, so they do have a female dog for sale, which is particularly good. This will be something I will mark on the map shortly, but another thing that occurred to me is we should probably ask about any blacksmiths in the area. It'll be good for us to locate a masterwork blacksmith and put an order in for some armor. So I'm going to go to the AH, ask help or company option, and then down at the bottom, is there a blacksmith here? No, no blacksmiths around here. You must find them elsewhere. So there's probably not any in the neighboring villages either. Or she would have notified me of that. So no worries. We plan on doing some exploring too. Now we will exit out of that. And as I said, I want to mark each village that sells animals with an X. And I'm just going to enter what kind of animal. There we go. So again, for the future reference, I know that this is a spot where I can come to start preparing and building up my herd and my pack of canines. Ah, so I have located a master blacksmith and this sets us on the first step towards our ultimate goal, which is the destruction of the Nurpezid. And of course, we will order us some armor from this gentleman right here. I think a helmet is the first piece. And of course, we want nothing less than masterwork quality. So we will hit helmet here. 
there we go of course it will take him two weeks to get this produced and he will expect payment upon delivery so even though we're completely broke right now with barely anything including enough food to feed ourselves he's going to be okay with that as long as we have enough when we arrive to pick up the goods all right well having made our way a little bit farther south we've come into a village which does sell a few dogs so i have marked that on the map as you can see but um, more importantly we are tired and actually we caught a little bit of a cold too here traveling around the map so we're going to enter one of their cottages and pull up next to a fire for a nice long sleep here at this location they won't mind a bit and hopefully this will do us a little bit of good. Of course, bright and early in the morning, we're going to set back off for some more exploration. I still have not located a really nice hunting ground area that I like, but it just takes a little bit of time to explore. But of course, you have to balance it with the very meager food that we start with. We will need to get a hunt underway, otherwise starvation starts to kick in. And that starts to slowly reduce our physical capabilities, making it harder and harder to collect and gather and hunt food, which starts to endless cycle towards ultimate demise. But we're going to avoid that today and zoom back out to the world map. And like I said, continue exploring. All right, well, I have found a nice open area here. Very clear, flat, not a lot of trees. Just south of the location where we put in the order for the blacksmith. And we have come across a pig. So I think it's time to initiate our very first hunt. Let's encounter this pig. Could be a single pig or often, yes, they do travel in groups. Now we need to be especially careful here. We're going to turn around, check our backs. They are very close to us, but if we injure one, it can often provoke the others to attack us. But this is really hard to pass up. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this closest one. We'll go for the difficult headshot here, hoping we get lucky. Oh, flew right past him. Now the pigs are fleeing. Yeah, which is good news for us. Doesn't look like any of them went hostile immediately. Let's try another shot here at this one closest to us. Body shot this time, but a little bit better luck, hopefully. Oh, we still missed it. And it's time to zoom out, take a better look. Oh, if we look to the south, though, this pig right here has gone hostile. So we should probably turn our eyes that way. First, let's wield another arrow. Very important to be prepared and we will move towards him just entered the water interestingly enough coming right at me i'm gonna flip my vision back around behind me for a turn okay just want to make sure there's nothing no hostile pigs coming at me let's move here there we go that's that's going to present us with a much better shot i think let's try and hit this pig come on nice we nailed him take a quick look at the injury he is suffering from a minor puncture in his left hip and he's a little bit fatigued so this pig is now our main target because he's carrying one of my arrows for one thing I'd like to get that back but um, he's also injured so hopefully we can run him down but let's give it a try our target is just to the south of us right there but we've got another hostile pig in the water coming directly at us so i think it's time to take a shot and if we hit him it'll probably make him lose his aggressiveness nice yeah so he is now running away let's take a look at him see how badly he is injured this one's actually walking lame so this is a critical point in the hunt where i have to make a decision do i chase this pig which is now closer to me or do i go for the one in the south I honestly think we're going to have to switch targets and go for the one here that is more critically injured, walking lame. Probably going to be able to catch that one a lot easier. So let's set our character into sprint mode. And we're going to run at this pig who is going real slow. He's not even trying to get out of the water at this point. All right. I tell you what, let's go ahead and get a little bit closer here. We will take another shot at him. I don't like to be using my arrows. In fact, let's just make sure no other pigs are 
coming at us. Okay, we're good. There he goes. He looks like he is maybe trying to get out of the water. Let's make our way around here. There he goes. All right, now it's time to sprint. Oh, we've got another hostile pig to the north. Oh, ooh, we've got two more coming at us. Okay, they're sticking up for each other right now, aren't they? Let's stop our running so we can preserve our endurance a little bit, which we might very well need here for this fight. But I'm gonna wait just a turn or two until they come at me, then I can hopefully get a better shot on them. Here we go. We are running low on arrows. Boom, okay, so that scared them off. And now that one is injured, also carrying one of my arrows too. Boy, oh boy, like I said, our ammunition's getting low, but hey, if we succeed in this hunt, it won't be an issue. And let's see, I'm gonna continue targeting the one that is walking lame, if I can reacquire it. All right, well, it is just me and the lame pig. And if we take a quick look at him, you can see that he is very fatigued. So he is on the edge of breathlessness. And from here on out, I'm hoping I can just run him down without wasting any more of our precious arrows. And if we take a quick look behind us, yep, we can see there are no more pigs. I am currently sprinting after him, trying not to lose sight of him for too long. But like I said, with that breathlessness, once he gets into breathless, it should be over and done at that point. All right, I need to stop running to preserve my own endurance levels here. Let's just very carefully follow his tracks till we locate him again. And there he is, dead ahead. Again, let's very carefully check our back. Check the rear, always making sure nobody is going to be attacking us, none of those fellow pigs. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit wield my fine camo knife this will be the first kill for our knife here hopefully fingers crossed if everything goes well but we are coming up right along behind him very nice now we are in melee range so it's time to grab the knife and i'm going to use my blunt side of the knife this is so i don't damage the skin or the pelt of the animal as opposed to poking it full of holes and reducing the quality of the final hide this way we can hopefully knock him down if I go for the legs. We'll repeat that a few more times. Oh, he's become hostile towards me, so he is possibly going to get an attack off. Let's, uh, let's go for a blunt to the skull here. And that was a successful hit, and it turned him from aggressive to unaggressive. So he's running again, but again, he's breathless, so he's not going too far. Get ourselves into melee. Keep taking swings at him. Oh, now he's he's attacking us. So we're going to dodge his attack. And he completely missed us. No problems. There it goes. He is now unconscious. So we are one step away from finishing off this animal. Usually it takes a few blows. So let's, let's go for another hit with our knife. We're going to do blunt to the skull. Hopefully finish him off. Like I said, a few more times should do the trick here. There it is, and the animal is now dead, indicated by the little blood spatter there and the fact that we can stand right on top of him. So we have successfully completed our first hunt. I've got to keep my head on a swivel though, just in case there are any hostile pigs around, but now that this one's dead, that should do to calm the rest of the pack of pigs. And I have very carefully marked the original spot where we encountered them for two reasons. Hopefully we can go back there and kill a couple more pigs if we're careful. And also there's a bunch of arrows that I'd like to try and pick up in that area. So I'm definitely going back for that reason alone. All right, well, the hunt is over, but that means that the real work is about to begin. So we've got to get this pig skinned and butchered, then smoke the meat for preservation. And we'll probably need to roast a bit of it up here just for our near-term needs. But Canute, I believe, is probably strong enough to pick up this entire pig. Yes, he definitely is. And if you want to see me create this character and watch and kind of go through some of my thinking 
as I make choices about his physical profile and other things, stats and skills, stick around to the end of the video here. I do have that entire character creation at the very end, so I hope you enjoy that. Also, just as a note on the series upload schedule, this won't be a daily upload series since I'm trying to edit it and make the episodes a bit more refined and watchable. So with that in mind, I'll probably be doing at least three episodes a week. So I hope you'll stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. And of course, I love to hear from you guys. So leave me some comments down below and I will see you all on the next episode. Welcome to the character creation for Newt the Kamalainen, also known as Newt the Destroyer or Newt Hammer of the Nerpez. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get on with the character creation. So we are going to be doing a too easy creation here. Since this is a pretty challenging task we've set before ourselves, I want to give our character every advantage he can get. And just as a side note too, if you're new to the Unreal world and you like a more dedicated walkthrough on how to create a character and your first couple days of survival, I do have a short tutorial series linked in the description below, so check that out. And for all you players out there, I do plan on expanding on that tutorial series in the near future so stay tuned subscribe to the channel but like i said let's get into the too easy and of course that selection will affect our choices a little bit later down the road now we're just going to go in to pick a culture uh as said he is a kamalanian and that's basically because they're pretty big they're a beefy type of race so we're going with male character name canute and that's it there we go now most important choice the character portrait this is a fellow i haven't played with in a little while i think since my blacksmith run but um he looks like a destroyer to me so let's go with him and i'm gonna choose the autumn for strategic purposes it's still early enough that we can do some hunting and stuff before the dead of winter but we're not starting in the spring or summer where we have to wait a full year before the ground the ice it's solid enough for, for us to travel over, which of course makes attacking and exploring so much easier. But so autumn it is, and now comes the fun part re rolling again and again and again until I get a profile that I really like that I know will be something that I can be proud of to call Canute. So, what I'm going to do is probably speed this up here and give you an idea of just how many times you have to roll. Sometimes you do get lucky, only roll four or five or two or three times, you get somebody really good. But let's just see what we can do here. All right, well, there we go. Again, that one didn't take too long. Um, I'm going to settle for this guy. Sometimes I do insist on having like his endurance and strength maxed out, but typically that's for carrying capacity. And like when I need to build something, I want a high endurance and strength so he can move logs and timber around real easily with as much, you know, power and capability. But since we're just going for a fighter run, this guy is really, really an all around good character, some really high stats here. So. I think I'm satisfied with this one. Plus, he's big, too. 235 pounds, 77 inches. Yeah, he's going to be an imposing figure here. Okay, so we will now accept him by continuing. There we go. Spells and magic means. Not that important. Oh, but I did notice I got the blood stanching incantation, which is going to be helpful for the warrior in us. Now, this is the page where our first initial choice of a too easy start comes into play because I can go in here and really tailor what I want my skills to be so I can remove points. And we're going to do that for a lot of the stuff that I won't be using or that I'll be using constantly and will really increase itself on its own quickly. Uh, let's see. Tracking's okay. I'm going to leave that on there. It'll help us early game with hunting. Weather lore's coming off. Don't need net making or fishing. We don't need agriculture. Building's good to have some competency in so we can make shelters really quickly. And cookery is important. Although I'm not going to max this one out because it is a skill that kind of builds on its own quite quickly. Let's just go with herb lore, no. Hide working, yes. I want to be able to establish some early stuff, some early hides so we can trade and stuff. But um, Timbercraft again helps a little bit. Let's 
go down to our combat skills. Now, most important for our fighter. I will remove the club, the flail, and the crossbow. I'm going to go ahead and max him out on the bow. Max him out on the spear. That's as far as he can go. we got a lot of points here. Give him all the points in the axe. Also, I'm going to do something I almost never do and give him points in sword fighting too. So maybe we'll find a really nice sword at some point. He can use that. And a few points in unarmed. There we go. So you can see he's going to be quite the beast in terms of his combat. Unfortunately, dodge is not something we can allocate or take away points in. It's determined by, I believe, our agility or dexterity skill. But uh, one of those two. But I've got a few points left. I think what I'll do is I'll throw some into physician. That's obviously good for a fighter. Yeah, we'll just max that out. There we go. So you can see he's a very overpowered character just in terms of the skills. You know, as a 16-year-old being this good at fighting, he's like Achilles level here. But uh, nonetheless, like I said, for this type of challenge, we need as many advantages as we can get. So there we go. We will hit yes. And of course, we get to determine our world now. This probably is going to focus mainly on the size of the Nerpezit down here, the purple guys. I'm going to be looking for as small an enemy as possible. And also, we want a nice size for our allies. These guys, the white here in this section, the owl tribe, they're, they're nice and large. We can get to them. They're fairly close. i got to be honest, I like this map right off the bat. Um, I'm going to remove the culture real quick and just take a look at some of the geography in this general region. It's pretty flat, I can tell from the dark green colors here, so I like that. I think we will take this world. Now, the hard part, we've got a, a character that's a little red dot right up here, all by itself. That's us. So, let's go ahead and re-roll a few times here and see if we can get him in a new start location that we like. I want it in this journal vicinity, right here, down by, I believe that's the Reese or... I can't remember that. I think it's the Kesey culture name. The hunter, a dark green color here. Oh, that's a good spot. It's on the wrong side of this river, though, so let's keep going. I'm going to be very picky here about some of these early choices because they can help get you off on the right foot and make a huge difference down the road. So uh, what I do is I keep my eyes focused on the area I want to spawn in. I don't look at each position that this spawns in, but if it happens to drop in this general vicinity, then I stop and kind of analyze there. Okay, so I stop. Let's see here, see, clear. It's not terrible, I mean, because we can move into some of these flatter areas as we go. So, all right, I like that. It's good to start off this close to an ally so we can, like I say, do some early trading for any equipment that we don't start off with. And also, we're in the fall, so we're probably going to have to smoke some meat starting off our first couple of kills. And that's easiest done in an ally's cabin where they set the fires for you and you don't have to build the thing even. So that's going to be a good spot to enter. Let's go ahead and hit E to enter and play this world. Okay, now, one of the final choices. And one of the most critical. Now, if you want something like a really, really tough survival start, then you would go with maybe something like Hurt, Helpless, and Afraid. Or if you want the ultimate challenge, Runaway Slave, which essentially puts you in a combat situation right off the bat, and all you have is like a knife. So it can be real tricky, but you can get lucky too in this run. Now, anyway, what we're going to go with is the Unreal World. It's just the basic start playing in the middle of the wide, unfamiliar wilderness. We'll start with random gear. It's usually decent stuff, you know, stuff you can definitely survive with. And we might even get lucky and get a bow and arrow. But um, anyway, so we select this. Yes, this is our scenario. Now, of course, we're not gonna go with the tutorial. So this would be the final choice. I'm just gonna hit escape. And that launches the encyclopedia and brings us right to the start of the game. So that does it for the character creation here with Canute the Destroyer. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed the very first episode. I really appreciate you guys tuning in for my new Unreal World series. 
If you are a fan of the Unreal World, then let me know down in the comments section. And of course, check out my other Unreal World series, all linked down below in the description. But I appreciate you guys out there, and I will see you all on the next episode.